I'm going to walk through um, uh, the um, sort of key uh, long-term drivers, if you like, um, uh, of sort of fundamentally what's important to healthcare, um, and um, put that in the context of sort of healthcare within stock markets. Then I'll um, I'll just drill down on the shorter term issues and focus on uh, large cap, mega cap healthcare, and then separately smaller mid cap, and and then feed that ultimately into the trust because it has exposure to kind of those two different areas of healthcare, larger mega cap on one side and smaller mid cap on the other side. So I'm just going to run through the presentation. I'll jump around a bit if you don't mind, um, just to get. Uh, focus sort of the story in the right order, if you like. So, long-term fundamental themes on healthcare. So, um, I'm sure many of the listeners have heard the story around, you know, the demographic shifts we're seeing in developed markets, then ultimately in emerging markets, mean there's a really good demand story for healthcare, which we agree with, and the demographics are used as a story to uh, kind of argue for investing in lots of areas, not least healthcare, but. We kind of come from it from a different angle, um, particularly with developed markets right now. So agreed, you've got the demographic story, but there's a cost to delivering healthcare. And we feel that in developed markets in particular, um, healthcare delivery is extremely inefficient. It's very, very expensive and um, it needs to become more productive. Um, and so the way we think about healthcare is um, we want to be investing in uh, new products that companies are generating, new services, innovation that can actually drive down the cost of delivering healthcare. And so the most expensive setting to deliver healthcare today is in really big inpatient hospitals on a per day basis. That's really, really expensive. And so uh, one of the stories uh, we're seeing is a shift of healthcare out of that setting into much lower cost settings such as uh, outpatient ambulatory surgery centers, patients being treated at home. Those settings are, um, are a lot more cost effective. So that's a, a kind of simplistic story, but that was actually a feature of uh, what we've seen during the pandemic years um, that we, we have been focused on the shift pre-pandemic. But, you know, if you think about the, the COVID situation and hospitals, uh, there was a natural shift of getting patients away from hospitals and delivering care in a different way. And so that's kind of how we think about healthcare. Um, and that's just one of the, me the main sort of themes or drivers. So uh, uh, on this slide, what we show are the six most important investment themes for the next five to 10 years. And this, the, the companies we invest in um, typically have exposure to, to some of those themes. So what I talked about in terms of shifting the cost of that, cost of delivering care, that's healthcare dis delivery disruption. So again, ambulatory surgery centers using robotics, uh, telehealth, which again was uh, telehealth feature of the pandemic. So shifting uh, care um, to a different site to achieve cost savings. Um, other themes, innovation, that's what you'd expect from a healthcare fund, investing in things like biotech and medical devices. Um, consolidation, um, that's really important um, sort of driver in healthcare. So healthcare is the most fragmented industry out there and it naturally consolidates as companies look to become more efficient, um, increase market share, boost margins, increase scale. Um, so that's an ongoing story, but we've actually, with the way markets changed last year, uh, well, and it really started obviously in late late in the year, sort of the beginning of the fourth quarter uh, 21, access to capital started to become more difficult and with rates increasing, tightening financial conditions. And that's actually, uh, particularly in the second half of 22, we've seen an increase in consolidation. So that's an important feature. Emerging markets, uh, a different story on healthcare, um, coming from a much lower base, but an exciting investment opportunity. And I'll show you one slide on that. And then lastly, Outsourcing, um, again, that comes down to sort of companies in the industry wanting to become more efficient. So they outsource what they do. And that was very important in terms of 
um, the ability to um, generate vaccines, etc. A lot of these companies in the outsourcing area helped facilitate that process during the pandemic. And lastly, I think what COVID did illustrate is how important prevention is. That's the most powerful form of healthcare and sort of reignited interest in um, the, in prevention in healthcare, which uh, pre-pandemic, um, I would argue there was much less interest in that area, even though it's so powerful. So, um, you know, reignited the, um, sort of the promise there. So just taking this one more step and just focusing on emerging markets here on this slide. So what we show here is the healthcare expenditure per capita across the globe. So uh, on the bar chart, um, just comparing country by country um, and you know to the left what you can see is um, developed markets typically uh, the big spenders the US and Switzerland but generally the theme is here again that healthcare spend expenditure is very high uh, the delivery is super inefficient and it needs to improve so that's the story there but at the other end of the spectrum the spending on healthcare and here we show India Indonesia and China as the lowest spenders on this graph. So the story here is really about um, expansion of access to he healthcare infrastructure. Um, and this should be a really powerful story in the long term. And um, we have exposure here and um, we think it will be um, a good story as uh, spends uh, on at this end of the, um, of the graph increases uh, dramatically over the years ahead. So that's the sort of you know, uh, the, the long term sort of fundamental story, if you like. Um, coming to the sort of the stock market and on healthcare, um, I think, you know, this is, uh, if you're going to take a chart away from this presentation, I think this is hopefully the most powerful. So what we have here is we've, uh, we've taken the S&P 500 healthcare sub index and looked at the performance of that over 30 plus years. So the top graph is uh, the absolute return for the S&P 500 healthcare index. So returns have been extremely strong over the last 30 years plus. The bottom graph, which is really what I want, I want to focus on, is the S&P 500 healthcare sub-index and the performance of that versus the broader or the whole S&P 500 index. And what you can see over the long term is uh, healthcare has been a good place to be on a relative basis, um, strong outperformance. Um, but you do seem to have these waves of outperformance and underperformance. They seem to sort of seven, eight year cycles. And um, what we see, we may be coming to the end of another sort of down cycle. So um, the peak in healthcare versus the market was in Q3 2015. And since then, at the index level, healthcare has underperformed. Now it's done a bit better of late uh, because of the environment we've been in over the last. Um, sort of year and a quarter, but um, at the index level, I mean, you've had stocks that have done way better than that, but at the index level, uh, we've been through another sort of down cycle. And what we're hopeful for is that we move into another positive cycle. Now, what seems to drive these kind of mini cycles, if you like, is the uh, perceived risk over um, uh, almost extreme policy change that will impact healthcare in the US, which is admittedly a very important market so um what you've seen you know if i refer to different part different time periods you know one example where healthcare derated um through the uh early 2000s into um <clears throat> so uh 2009 10 was when the democrats got elected and you had um president obama so in the us the democrats is, are perceived as the riskiest um to healthcare policy that might put in some kind of extreme policy that will impact industry. So, you know, you saw a significant derating through that period. And then once policy was enacted, um, the, what, what, what the changes that actually happened then in 2009, 10 uh, were called Obamacare. And then once that was kind of signed into law and the changes were sort of understood, you then enjoyed a significant period of outperformance again until the uh, sector peaked on a relative basis in Q3, 15. And so similarly, again, over the last seven years, you've had fear again, you know, ultimately um, you had um, the Democrats and President Biden coming in 2020. Um, and that leading into that phase led to significant nerves, nervousness again about extreme change. But we've had law come into place that was signed last year as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. 
Uh, we now understand there were two key pieces of legislation there. We understand the impact. In our view, they're net neutral. The key point is we now move on from that policy, hopefully over the next several years, and whether we repeat the seven, eight-year cycle, we'll see. But we're hopeful that headline policy risk will have dim diminished and we'll see an expansion in valuation for healthcare. So, you know, that's sort of a reason for optimism based on what we've seen historically. And then just on the shorter term, um, I think what's really powerful for healthcare um, is, um, is just looking at the sort of the broader macro. Um, so healthcare did really well last year, um, particularly large mega cap. Small and mid cap, much less so as you'd expect in a difficult environment for those type of stocks. The reason large mega cap healthcare did so well is in a stagflationary environment, investors are very focused on margins. Mega cap healthcare, large cap healthcare, pharmaceutical companies have very powerful margins and are able to maintain those margins even in a difficult cost environment with rising inflation. And that's why the stocks did really well and healthcare outperformed. We think there are uh, reasons to believe that can continue and that's really down to what might happen to earnings. So uh, sorry this uh, graph isn't that clear but just to explain so we go back to the early 70s and this is the US but you can kind of expand it out to other developed markets. So since the sort of low the white line is new orders um, manufacturing new orders and the yellow line is inventories. Now normally these really uh, closely correlate that's what you'd expect right if you're running a business new orders grow, you boost inventories to support that and then reverse. And obviously in 2020, in March, those new orders collapsed. Then you had this enormous bounce back and excess uh, stimulus into economies. And we, you saw new orders heat new heights and you saw inventories grow with that. However, since you know we've coming out of the pandemic, which really what we saw is uh, demand pulled forward aggressively, with rates coming up now and as we move forward, we're seeing new order growth really collapse. However, the, you've seen a real dislocation in historically what's happened in terms of what inventories have done. So inventories are very elevated and this relationship needs to normalize. And so for broader industries that experience the sort of the pandemic pull forward, um, they've got in theory a really challenging outlook in the short to midterm on earnings in 2023. However, for healthcare, it was almost a reverse where in the pandemic, actual utilization or demand or new orders, as you know, if, if you kind of think of that in healthcare, actually declined because there were the challenges of dealing with the pandemic. So, if anything, 2023, we're starting to see, um, and this really started in, in Q4 last year, an improvement in utilization. And that's in part driven by the need to uh, deal with backlogs of procedures that built up over. Um, the, the pandemic phase. So we've got an actual outlook in healthcare where you've got a potentially an improving a, a growth outlook and improving earnings outlook, which is in a huge contrast to many other industries as we look out into 2023. So again, uh, the macro could be very supportive for healthcare. So if I just drill that down um, to large cap, um, and then I'll just a couple of comments on the um, uh, on the on the trust uh, to finish off. So this again is just reflecting what I was saying earlier. What we chart here is um, actually so you know I referenced healthcare large mega cap did very well versus the market really outperformed. If you drill down further on the broad, bottom graph here, you can see the performance of mega cap healthcare versus broad larger mega cap, and it was a significant outperformer. The reason again was the stagflationary environment and margins. And the hence why, and then I, you know, I've explained about the the outlook for other industries and how that can support large mid cap healthcare. Um, looking into smaller mid cap, so this graph shows different parts of healthcare. So the MSCI healthcare index was what I showed on the previous pages of the broader index, which is really large and mega cap. So this chart goes back to 09, and you can see what happened during 2020 through to 22. So Large mega cap healthcare, good steady out, uh, performer with um, much lower volatility. In uh, biotech and Russell 2000 healthcare, which is small mid cap healthcare, thinks roughly sub $10 billion. Uh, returns can be extremely good. Uh, obviously, you can see significant corrections, and these areas are much more volatile. But we're just highlighting here how much small mid cap and biotech have corrected over the last year and a half and how we think the risk reward is much more attractive here now. And if I show that in a different way, what we have here is going back to the mid 80s, 
this performance of small mid cap healthcare versus the broader small and mid cap index as represented by the Russell 2000. And what you can see is above zero, healthcare is outperforming in small and mid cap, below zero, underperforming. And I just highlight that over the last couple of years, healthcare has done really poorly. If anything, the worst phase, even worse than 92, 93, when healthcare was really under the cosh, under concerns over policy risk in the US when we had the Clintons in power. But what's key here is that actually um, the sort of the rate of change is, is, is much more positive of late. So the performance is less bad, uh, hopefully getting better. And small caps generally, particularly in developed markets, small mid caps are very cheap. It's true for the case of healthcare, true for the case in the UK, for example, probably the, the cheapest area. But what we'd, what we'd highlight here is um, large mega cap, it's kind of easier to explain the story in the environment we're in. Smaller mega, smaller mid cap harder, but you know maybe things are improving. The other thing, just to finish, is we are seeing M and A pick up. I referred to this earlier in the second half of last year. Smaller mid cap was really, uh, really beaten up in uh, a sort of by mid year, uh, almost sort of capitulation, and that's when we started to see big, bigger companies looking to do M and A because valuations are attractive, and. We think even though, again, smaller mid cap is a harder sell because of the macro issues that people are worried about, but this M&A environment at least should provide some uh, support for smaller mid cap stocks in healthcare at a minimum, um, and where we think the outlook is very attractive alongside larger mega cap. So I'll just finish a uh, little detail on the trust then open the Q&A as I'm running through time here. So um, the Polar Capital Global Healthcare Trust so it's really, um, our, our growth portfolio is really high quality, larger mega cap stocks in healthcare, our favorite ideas, um, global exposure, exposure to the themes that we talked about earlier, and that we show some of the investments we have here on this page. On the, on the other side of the portfolio, and, that, and that's, sorry, that's why, you know, updated in our views in larger mega cap, which are positive versus med, many other industries because of what, as, what's happening as we come out of the pandemic. Innovation portfolio, so sub $5 billion market cap, smaller mid cap. Again, you know, talked about these kind of stocks are being pressured. We see lots of opportunity here, and this is where we're seeing M&A pick up. So it gives uh, sort of op optionality to what is mainly a high quality uh, growth, uh, a reasonable price type uh, portfolio. Um, exposures, so you can see our large cap focus, 79% above 10 billion. Exposure to lots of different subsectors, pharma and biotech and healthcare equipment, the key ones presently. And you can see diverse exposure. Um, uh, US is uh, obviously a big weighting, but uh, exposure to areas like Japan, India, uh, Europe. Um, so geographically quite diverse, uh, although the US are obviously a key weighting. And then just to finish, um, just to highlight some of the stocks we own. Um, so these are the relative overweights. So you can see uh, lots of different stories there. Hopefully names that um, aren't as well known um, and that will provide interest in some of you know our favourite ideas in healthcare. And then the underweights, which maybe some of the names there are more well known, and they're stocks that we don't have exposure to. And you know, obviously our overweights are, are the ideas that we're more excited about. So let me uh, just finish there, just to reiterate long term. Fundamental drivers are very strong. Six key themes I highlighted. Um, in, uh, in terms of long-term uh, potential returns, we've had these cycles. We could be moving into a more positive one. And then um, large cap, powerful story there relative to other industries. Small mid cap, more difficult um, sort of um, um, sort of pushing that story, but we think uh, valuations are attractive and we're seeing consolidation as providing support there. And then, you know, just lastly, um, we think that, that we are now seeing increasing utilization in healthcare after a period of slower utilization driven by the pandemic. And we're hopeful that that can provide some growth, um, uh, growth for the sector. So hopefully the outlook uh, in 2023 and beyond uh, is quite a positive one. So, Roland, I'll finish there. The first question is about the investment process and um, how sure. to identify ideas. And then um, the second part to that is what kind of resources do you have for 
medical and technical experts to better understand what these companies you're investing in are actually doing? Yeah, let, let me deal with that last one first. So we have a team of eight people. Um, most of the team have background in terms of, you know, whether it's study or working in, in healthcare, science and what have you. So I think that's important. I think also uh, a lot of experience investing in the space. So you can have that sort of science background, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, ultimately um, you're trying to make uh, successful investments. And so it's, it, I think it's experience of financial markets are super important. Um, in terms of sort of uh, our own independent research we do, we have one person, Tara, who's focused um, explicitly on um, interacting with experts like you referenced. So we use network providers that give us access to experts. And, you know, obviously we want to speak to doctors about products being developed, but also manufacturing, legal, regulatory. So we have access to experts. So I think experience relative relevant sort of background can all feed into maximizing the use of those sort of that access to experts and hopefully that can help um you know in trying to deliver uh our performance in terms of uh investment process and generating ideas almost like the first part of the process and then filtering through those ideas i mean we get those ideas from all sorts of places you know we we, we do lots and lots of company meetings analysts so you have that kind of exposure, you know, we go to conferences, um, we uh, speak to those experts that I talked to you about, you know, we have contacts, we get ideas from all sorts of different places. So it's kind of all over the place, if you like. The key thing in terms of having a process is taking those ideas and drilling down to what matters and what doesn't really efficiently, and then getting a watch list and trying to generate a portfolio from that. So key is the process and making that efficient and really understanding what drives performance in healthcare. And that's absolutely, absolutely critical because there would be an immense amount of noise. And so drilling through what matters and ultimately building out uh, the portfolio with the risk profile you want to generate with, you know, the, port the objectives of the portfolio. Next question, um, are you focused on growth and income um, or just growth? Uh, if you and, and do you pay any income or if so what's the yield yeah so historically um so the, the trust is kind of like on its second life if you like so the first life was it was an income and growth focused fund this is more growth focused um but that's we do have stocks in the underlying that pay a dividend i, I want to say i'm going to be slightly off but around one percent is sort of yield on the and maybe a bit below on the on, on the trust but the focus is growth but i don't want to give you a sense that you know everything we're investing in is really really high growth etc it's the portfolio is sort of growth at a reasonable price is how i characterize it there are stocks particularly companies like pharma companies you know big and mega cap tend to pay a dividend and obviously that can uh, be paid out to shareholders um but it is different to its previous life which was much more focused on income but that was coming from a you know a backdrop back in 2010 when yields were very high on things like pharma stocks. So in 2017, we shifted to more of a diverse approach and uh, different sectors and growth within healthcare. So I'd say it's more growth with the exposure to the six key themes I highlighted, valuation approach, growth at a reasonable price, and there is a yield on the, on the trust, but it's lower than it used to be. Thank you, Gareth. We are out of time. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank <music> you.